Hello everyone and welcome back guys to the start of yet another LCR Championship on the channel. Today we are here for the inaugural race of LCR Formula E Season 3. Obviously one of my favourite championships in the whole of League Race. And obviously be coming to this as the defending double champion. So hopefully this series we can make it 3 from 3 in LCR Formula E here. But it's going to certainly be an interesting championship nonetheless. This time around I'm teaming up with Ethan PT as well. CK, unfortunately, is no longer going to be our main rival in this championship as he's off doing some of the OMA World Touring Car Championship, which obviously we won last season. But yeah, the start of the new series, and we've got one Jork94 on pole, and it's lights out, and away we go there very, very early. Actually, wasn't expecting that as soon as we did, and quite clearly I wasn't expecting it in the race as well here because we didn't get off to a very good start. There. We've got Boris Letterbox. Trying to look up the inside into Woods Tom one. There's just a bit of contact between myself, him, and Jork there as we head through the first couple of corners there. But we do hold on to P2 after all of that. Nonetheless, they're getting very, very loose through the S's first time round in this race there. But yeah, Jork managed to get pole position and he was looking very, very quick here around Rio. So hopefully we can try to apply some pressure to him throughout the entirety of this race and just see what happens. But yeah, Rio... Very, very short track. A few changes to the Formula E structure this season. We have got much, much quicker cars than in previous championships. It's effectively, you know, as close to the Gen 2 cars as you can really make on Forza here. So they've got a little bit more power as well and everything like that. So hopefully make it very, very fun at the end of the day. Everyone is running the same Formula E car with the same upgrades and no tuning there as Boris almost completely classes into the back of us in towards turn one there is tires absolutely everywhere having to cut the second part of the chicane there because there was no way in hell we were going to be able to get the car rotated through there and yeah that's one unfortunate thing still on forza motorsport 7 here you know tires can still prove lethal at the end of the day there but already trying to have a potential look around the outside of jork as we head off the exit of the first few corners here but yeah end of lap two though already it's only like a 46 second lap around this circuit here so there's going to be a lot of time to have some battles here and yet a 38 lap race in this one obviously including the one formation lap as well here as we head down to towards turn one they can see potentially having a bit of a look around the outside of jork once again here you know at the moment he's doing everything he needs to defending the inside as best as possible there as i think there was a bit of a pile up behind us on lap one there's a couple of drivers already having to dive in and make their first stop of the day you can see already though Unfortunately, we were just trying to apply the pressure to Jork in the early stages of this race there. But he was slowly but surely starting to open up a little bit of a breakaway by the halfway stage of this race there. And it's really such a difficult track to be able to battle with people. Because the only real opportunity you've got is down in towards turn one. And unfortunately, with the extra power now of these cars, you can't really get a run on anyone. Because everyone is just bouncing off the rev limiter at the end of the day. It's default setup, so yeah, no one can really do anything in terms of the slipstream here, unless you get a monumental run on someone, and then they still can't hit the rev limiter. But yeah, unfortunately, it was going to make things very, very difficult there, as we had a horrendous run on that lap, dropping a whole second over RPB there. And you can see Jork now up to about a 300-foot lead in this race. So we're going to dive into the pit lane here, hopefully come out in a bit of free air, and just try to pound out some laps, and hopefully pull out a little bit of an undercut in this race there. But unfortunately, a very, very late pit lane for ourselves is going to mean we are definitely going to struggle to make up any ground through the pit window alone here as we head now back out of the pit lane. And it doesn't look like this undercut is going to work out all too well for us there. So we're going to come back out down in P5. It might even be P6 of this Grand Prix there. It is going to be P5 once again in this race. There are a lot of cars just in front of us here that we might have to navigate over the next few laps of this race here. As you can see, heading down in towards someone there. We've got to try and get the tyres up to temperature here. And now on to lap 23. It was actually only Scott that we were going to have to battle in this race here. Everyone else would dive it into the pit lane here. As you can see, Scott, he wasn't looking to try and get in the way either there. He's going to give us the run on the inside through the final couple of corners there. Lose himself as little time as possible there. But yeah, we now move ourselves back up into P2 of the race here. And now it's just a case of waiting to see when Jordan would pit in this race here as you can see got about a 3,000 foot lead at the moment obviously that was going massively up and massively down over the course of a lap around this circuit but yeah hopefully you know even if we can just make a little bit of progress on him over the pit stop window there and there we go Jordan 
is now going to be pitting in this race here. Obviously, the champion in the LCR Project Cars League. Hopefully, we can try and defend our crown in Forza from him. But yeah, so far, this opening round of the series is looking too good for ourselves here as we head out of the final couple of corners there. We have set quite a decent lap this time round here, but I don't think, you know, the consistency we've had over these last few, we're not going to get close enough there because he's already exiting out of the pit lane here, and we're going to be a long, long way back still as we head down in towards turn one. Now, the gap, I think he'd open it up ever so slightly there as we get the move up the inside of VNT Rosenquist there. But yeah, I think the gap had pretty much hold a level here, but we were slowly starting to get into the groove once again in this race here. And over the next few laps, you just see skipping on about another four or five laps here. The gap was starting now to come back down in this race as we lap Rosenquist again there. Lap 29, 10 laps to go here. You can see the gap was just slowly but surely inching down lap after lap here. You know, we found a bit of consistency and we were slowly but surely starting to close in on a jolt here as we head down in towards turn one once again here. You can see nine laps to go now of this race. And can we potentially open up any sort of move? You can see we're just gaining nothing down the straights at the moment here. So we're just going to have to be brave at some point in this race. You know, we've got to try and force an error out of him as soon as possible here. Seven laps to go now of the race. And we were still trying to apply the pressure here as we head down in towards the final few corners. A little bit of contact there as we head through the final turn, almost putting it in towards the outside wall there out of the final corner. But now we were very, very close as we head over the start finish line here. Six laps to go of this race. We're starting to gain a little bit in the slipstream, but obviously not before very long, before we're then just bouncing off the rev limiter there. Get a little bit of a shorter run through turn one there. We're all over the back of Jork as we head down in towards turn one. Then we're going to go nice and late on the brakes there. Try and take him by surprise and we make the move work around the outside there. So really, really happy with that one there. We just about able to hold on around the outside there. And yeah, he just broke that a little bit earlier. We knew that was the opportunity that we had to take because, you know, we're not going to get any more of those in a race like this. Once you make that mistake once and you allow them to think about making a move, you're certainly not going to allow them to go for it once again here. As now, as we head on to the final lap of this race here, you can see we built up about a 100-foot margin over Jork here. But yeah, really, really, you know, we had one opportunity to go for that and we definitely tried to take it as best as possible there. Really, really late on the brakes as we head now through turn one for one final time in this race. Through the S's we go, just trying to ride the curves as best as possible. They're getting very, very loose there. That's going to cost us a run as we head down in towards the final few corners there. And Jork, he's all over the back of us here. We're going to have to go ever so slightly defensive through the final corners there. Getting very, very deep on the brakes there. Jork, he's going to be able to have a look up the inside there. And we just skimmed the wall on the exit of the corner as well there. But yeah, that got very, very close in the final lap of the race there. But we just about get the power down a little bit earlier there. And yeah, we do hold on for the race victory at the end of the day by less than a car length there. So Formula E once again producing very, very close results there. Unfortunately, a bit of a timing loop glitch there. Like I said, we had a bit of a lag start in this race. So unfortunately, meant that we'd, we'd end up with a 2.4 second victory. But it was, yeah, a tenth at most at the end of the day there. But my teammate EPT comes through for P3 ahead of Apex, Scott, Jack, a Boris Letterbox, Panda and VNT Rosenquist rounds out the finishes at the end of the day there. But yeah, that was a really, really good fun race in the end. Hopefully, we can have a bit more consistency. You know, this was my second race of 2020 on Forza there, only after the Daytona 500. So I'm very, very rusty at the moment. But yeah, Long Beach next week. Hopefully, we can try and find a bit more consistency here and start to build up a little bit of a margin over Jork there. But thank you all so much for watching this video. Do get yourself subscribed. And yeah, hopefully... I will see you guys next time at Long Beach.